Again, welcome to First Tuesdays. This is a monthly webinar that the Washington State Library hosts, um, normally on the first Tuesday of the month, with a few exceptions for federal holidays. <laughs> so this, um, I'm going to advance to the next slide because this has the, um, the technical support numbers and emails. So in case you're trying to watch the webinar and having some trouble, you might want to write down these numbers. Joe and Jeremy are your tech support. And um, I don't know actually if Joe is here. So Jeremy is probably a better support, but if you're having trouble getting in, I recommend emailing or calling him. This, I'm your facilitator, which basically means I just do the introduction and then turn it over to our expert on the topic. So Hopefully people have numbers written down if you need them. Hopefully no one needs tech support, but if you do, here are your choices. I've added it to chat for anybody's reference later. Excellent, thank you, Jeremy. So I wanted to let you know that these webinars are brought to you by the Washington State Library, which is um, part of the Office of the Secretary of State and funding comes from the Institution of Museum and Library Services. Um, so today we have a webinar about legal reference and we, Shani Kate is a, is our uh, presenter today. She did a webinar for us many years ago and it is one of the webinars that has been most frequently watched in our archives. That's clearly is a topic that is, there's a great need for knowledge about. A lot of people are interested in it. So I asked Shani if she would redo or update her her um, presentation and she thankfully said yes. So let me tell you a little bit about Shani. She is a longtime member of the Washington State Law Library reference staff. She said she originally caught the library bug while working as, as a student assistant at the University of Washington Susalo Library. Now that's lucky. I would love to work in Susalo. <laughs> she particularly enjoys complex legislative history research and she appreciates the variety of reference works that comes with serving patrons from both the public and private sectors. Um, Shaney wants you to know that she has a handout with all of the links that she's going to be showing you in her presentation and when we send out a link to the recording after the fact we'll attach that handout so you don't need to take notes you can just listen. <laughs> Um, Shani's also requested that we delay questions until the end of her presentation. So write them down or you can put them in the chat if you want and we will get to them after she's done. Um, and that is all for me. So Shani, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Nono. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my... Um, my um, desktop up here to share with you. I think this one is it. No, um, let me try that again. Let's see. All right, that looks like the correct version of my slideshow. Is that showing for you guys? Looks good. All right. Um, I really appreciate that introduction, Nono. I'm really excited to be here. I hope you guys learn a lot um, in this webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and dive in because I'm trying to get as much material in as possible in our short amount of time. I wanted to just give you um, some quick um, information about the State Law Library so you can sort of picture um, where I'm coming from. I'm not sitting in this beautiful room right now, but this is where I spend a lot of my time at our main um, reading room desk. Um, we at the State Law Library serve the legal community, all branches of government, and members of the public as well. We are located in the Temple of Justice in Olympia, and this room that you see here in the picture is located right across the foyer from the state Supreme Court room. But we have a couple of other floors of materials. All are open stacks. And again, we are open to the public. Um, the goals I have um, for this presentation today, when you leave, I am hoping that you will understand the nature of primary and secondary materials. 
um, that you will understand the types of law that are produced by each branch of government that you will go away understanding where legislative, executive, and judicial branch law can be found online. And finally, I'm just going to be providing you an overview of the services we provide here at the State Law Library. Um, there are two types of legal materials, um, primary authorities and secondary authorities. And instead of trying to sound smart and come up with a fancy definition for you, I stole one from Fundamentals of Legal Research. I'm just gonna read that real quick. Primary authorities are authorized statements of the law by governmental institutions. Such documents include the written opinions of courts, case law, constitutions, legislation, rules of court, and the rules, regulations, and opinions of administrative agencies. Secondary authorities are statements about the law and are used to explain, interpret, develop, locate, or update primary authorities. Um, in short, primary authorities or primary law is um, the laws themselves, whether it's statutes, cases, or regulations. Secondary authorities or secondary law are basically materials that are about the law and explain the law. Some examples. Um, I have on the left um, main primary materials being statutes, um, regulations, or administrative codes in court cases. And I've provided under that some sample questions where you might be using primary materials to answer those questions. And then to the right, I have um, some examples of secondary materials, such as law reviews, legal encyclopedias, and treatises. Um, treatises are book length explanations or expositions of the law, um, oftentimes topical, um, and um, those materials are going to be used more for the types of questions on the right. Um, you'll notice the, the questions on the right are a broader type question as opposed to the questions on the left. Um, where can I find the law on rental deposits? you know, you're likely going to go to a, directly to a statute for that or search for a statute as opposed to the questions on the right, which are really much more broader um, questions. So to start off with primary materials, I just wanted to, um, to go over a couple of things that you want to be considering when you're um, helping your patrons when they come and you're doing your reference interview and you think primary materials are where you're going to want to start. Um, where you look for answers is always going to depend on questions of jurisdiction. So when you're doing your reference interview, you're going to want to find out things like, are you looking for something local or you're, you're looking for an ordinance? Well, that's local. Uh, if you're if you're doing some research on divorce proceedings, you have a patron who is trying to do a divorce themselves. A lot of the um, materials um, that, that you're going to be looking at are going to be under state jurisdiction. And then um, if somebody came in and was researching bankruptcy, that's federal jurisdiction. That's not to say that when somebody, when a patron comes in, that it's going to be... Um, really obvious what the jurisdiction is. Um, we have people come in all the time that ask us questions. We don't know what the jurisdiction is. And when we don't, we oftentimes will start with some more general resources. If you have some general legal resources in your library, or you can call us for general resources. And then Google, of course, can be a, a resource for sort of um, for helping you out in that um, figuring out that jurisdiction. Um, when in doubt, you can always contact us and I'll be giving you that information later on how to contact us. Another thing um, I wanted to talk about is going back to school, civics, a really important um, thing um, to consider when you're doing legal research is um, where is the law that you're looking for coming from? Um, the three branches of government, again, are um, legis the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch, and we're going to be talking about those a little bit more, um, but uh, basically the legislative branch consists of the legislature, um, the executive branch consists of the um, state, and the when I talk about the legislature, that's state, federal, Congress, of course. Um, in the executive branch, we're talking about the state and federal agencies that administer and carry out statutes, and then um, judicial branch being the courts. Um, 
Okay, so when we're talking about the legislative branch, what does the legislative branch do? Well, the state and federal House and Senate enact laws that are enforced by state agencies and interpreted by the courts. So, um, you know, your, your legislative branch enacts laws and then state agencies and courts follow up on those laws in ways by administering those, those laws and then by interpreting the laws. Um, how does the legislative branch do that? Um, you're probably all pretty familiar to some extent with um, the legislative process. Um, bills are introduced. Um, they have to go through both houses of the legislature before they, are, um, before they can be passed. Um, a very small, small percentage of bills that are introduced actually get passed. Um, once a bill is passed, it becomes a session law. Um, and at the state level, um, those are put into a publication that's called Laws of Washington. At the federal level, um, you've probably heard of public laws. That's, that's the federal version of a session law. Um, and those are pu published in a book that's called Statutes at Large. Um, once we have session laws, they have to be incorporated into the statutes or what we call a code. Um, at the state level, that's called the Revised Code of Washington. I'm sure you've heard of the RCW. Um, at the federal level, um, that's the United States Code or the USC. Um, I have here on here um, that there is a difference between an unannotated code and an annotated code. Um, unannotated codes are something that you are going to be, be able to find online. Um, annotated codes are something that's more um, something that we're going to find in a subscription database or in print that we would have at our library. Um, but we use them all the time because um, we have patrons come in who might be researching a specific, specific statute, but they may want cases, law reviews, other library or legal materials related to that statute. We can go to the annotated version and, and help them with, with that. You are welcome if you ever have a patron who is um, researching an RCW or a USC to call us and we can download and email you sections from the annotated version. Where you can find these things online, um, at the state level, you can find bills, session laws, and statutes all at the Washington State Legislature's website. Um, bill research, um, you're typically going to be doing the actual bill research if you have someone coming to you who knows of a specific bill with a bill number or not. Um, if they know that um, some legislation has been introduced, they're not sure if it's passed, they want to know the status of it, that's when you're going to be doing bill research. Session law research um, is going to be something that you're going to be using when you're um, trying to find out the history of a statute. If you want to know um, how there were changes made to a statute, when you're looking at a code, um, you will actually see note, notations to the session laws, and that's when you're going to be getting into the session laws. Um, the bills at the state legislature's website are available back to 1985. Um, between 1985 and 1991, they're very difficult to find and we can always help you find those. Um, session laws are available all the way back to the territory um, at the state legislature's website and the RCW is available back to 1973. Um, when you go to the RCW main webpage, you're gonna see the current RCW, um, but there is a link um, that says RCW archive in the text on that page and it actually can take you back all the way back to 1973. So great resource if you have a patron coming in who is wanting um, RCWs um, from a cer certain year. At the federal level, um, all of these things, bills, um, public laws, and the United States Code are available at the Federal Digital System website. Um, you may very well be familiar with it. It's more popularly known as FedSys. Um, that website is actually going to be migrating over to um, a website that's called GovInfo that is currently in beta format right now. Um, but I'll be uh, mentioning FedSys quite a bit 
And um, the again, the as far as the, these federal bills, uh, public laws in the United States Code, um, those do not go all the way back. Um, I think they're mostly go back to the 90s. But um, anything that I mentioned today, um, if it's not available online, we will almost always have those materials from from earlier than the date that's available online. Um, okay, on to the executive branch. Um, what does the executive branch do? Um, I'm gonna take a little drink here. Um, state and federal agencies administer and carry out the laws that the legislative branch passes. They create administrative law. So you may have heard of administrative law before it's a little bit um, it's a little bit of a harder area of the law to get a handle on um, and to research it's not really difficult research but it's just something that a lot of people are not as familiar with um, an example of administrative law is say that the legislature passes has passed statutes um, on public disclosure um, then the state agencies, um, uh, at the state level I'm talking about, the state agencies then create their own rules and regulations um, about how their agency deals with um, releasing public records. Um, so that's sort of an example of how an agency administers and carries out um, laws that the legislation, legislative branch has passed. Um, how that happens is uh, an agency, whether uh, state or federal, will propose a rule and that is published um, at, in the state of Washington in the Washington State Register. Um, at the federal level, that's published in the Federal Register, um, which you've probably heard of in particular, the Federal Register. Um, there's an administrative pr procedure and process that has to take place um, after a proposed rule is published in those registers, um, there will be a public comment period, they'll make changes, um, and then a, a rule will eventually be adopted. Um, similar to statutes, once um, agency rules are adopted, they have to be incorporated into a code, into the administrative code. Um, at the state level, that's called the Washington Administrative Code or the WAC, which you've probably heard of. Um, and at the federal level into the Code of Federal Regulations or the CFR. Um, if somebody's coming in and needs to know current agency regulations, um, you know, they may be um, doing some environmental regulations research, um, labor, there are a lot of labor regulations. A lot of people don't realize that things like um, the breaks you take at work, um, meal, uh, meal periods, um, worker safety, that kind of thing um, falls under agency regulations. Um, so there may be statutes associated too, but um, if somebody's looking for those current regulations, you're going to want to point them to the WAC or the CFR. Um, the state register and the federal register are something that's going to be researched more um, in, as in a historical um, if there's a historical aspect to the question where somebody is doing some regulatory history um, research, that's when you're gonna be going into those, um, into those registers. Um, it is good to note that um, both the state register and the WAC are available again at the state legislature's website. All of the registers are available. The WACs are available back to um, 2004, I believe. Um, and then again, Federal Register and the CFR are available at the FedSys website, I think again, back to the 1990s. But another way of getting into agency rules is to actually go to a state or federal agency website. Um, most um, agency websites have a rulemaking link where you may be able to see um, actual current rulemaking activity if you're interested in what an agency is doing. Um, in their rulemaking at the time, or um, they oftentimes have like a rules and a laws link, and you can actually see um, WACs as well as RCWs that relate to that agency. Um, so that's another great way of getting into those. Um, there is a website you may have seen before called Access Washington, and it has links to all of the state agencies at that website. And at the federal level, um, 
FedSys has the um, uh, it's like the Un United States government manual um, that has all of the federal agencies um, on that website. Um, agency hearings are something that you probably are, are not going to be researching, finding uh, as many patrons researching, but it's good to note that that is another area of executive branch law. Um, in particular, um, environmental regulations and um, and employment and labor um, regulations will have associated um, uh, agency hearings um, where people might have some sort of grievance or there's some sort of regulation that needs to be aired out in an adjudicative um, forum. And um, some examples of those would be like the Board of Industrial Insurance Appeals, um, which governs workers' compensation and worker safety. Um, the Environmental and Land Use Hearings Office has um, several different types of environmental hearings. Um, the State Office of Administrative Hearings governs uh, some certain types of hearings. Um, so you can sometimes times find decisions from those hearings at these websites. Um, and then if you do have somebody who is actually interested in how to go about um, getting an administrative hearing, the State Office of Administrative Hearings um, has a website that does have some um, helpful information. Um, again, if, if you have a patron who is interested in hearings that are related to a specific agency, I would recommend that they go to an, the agency website, whether it's state or federal. Um, and then lastly and briefly, executive orders, um, all the rage right now, and um, they, uh, those would be governors and president's orders that are to be carried out by agencies. Um, those are pretty easy to find um, at the state level, at the governor's website, um, at the federal level, um, FedSys, again, popular website, um, there is a link there um, that is the compilation of presidential documents. Um, you can find executive orders there. You can also find them in Title III of the Code of Federal Regulations, which is the, um, the president's title. Um, but I actually find a website that's called the American Presidency Project um, to also be a great place to find executive orders. Okay, what does the judicial branch do? The courts interpret and apply the laws and regulations adopted by the legislative and executive branches of government. So I, in particular, will point people to court cases when um, they may have, uh, they may know a little bit of an, about an area of the law or they may have looked at some statutes and they don't quite understand how, what those statutes mean and how they may be applied. Um, of course, it's good to note that if somebody is doing some statutory research and they have ter and they're looking at terms in, in a statute that they don't understand, they should always go to the um, to the beginning of the RCW chapter and check and see if there's a definitions section because that is um, definitely something that somebody would want to look at when they are doing statutory research. Um, but they may not know what. The statute means and oftentimes if there's a, a statute that may be ambiguous um, it will be very likely that the courts have um, interpreted what that statute is supposed to mean um, of course you're oftentimes going to have um, patrons who have specific cases that that they're interested in and of course there are some great places to look for those um, Usually when people are doing case research, if, if you have a patron who's coming in and they need a case that will help them um, argue their point um, if they're going to court or if, if they're dealing with somebody and need to tell them what the law is, um, they're, you're going to want to point them to cases that have precedential value. So those are going to be cases that have come to um, an appeals court. Um, in, the in the state of Washington, um, the state Supreme Court is the highest appellate court, but there are also three divisions of the Court of Appeals. At the federal level, um, those um, cases that have precedential value are going to come out of the U.S. Supreme Court, 
the U.S. Court of Appeals, and the U.S. District Court. Um, U.S. District Court does not publish all of their cases, um, so the ones that they publish have precedential value, and that goes um, also uh, with the um, State Court of Appeals. Um, they don't publish all their opinions, and only the um, opinions that are published have precedential value. Um, cases for Washington can be found at um, the Washington Courts website. Um, there's an opinions link, and um, when you get to that page, when you've clicked on the opinions link, that, act, that page actually focuses much more on recent opinion, opinions that have come out of the state Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals. Um, but in the text on that page, you'll find a link to a site that actually has all um, state Supreme Court and published Court of Appeals cases back to um, territorial um, Supreme Court. So um, that is a place to look for Washington cases. Um, federal cases are much more varied in their availability online. Um, FedSys um, does have a United States Courts Opinion link. Uh, I recommend people might be able to go to um, uscourts.gov and check the individual court if you know what court you're looking at. Um, uscourts.gov has a link to PACER. You may have heard of PACER. It's the, the federal um, court filing system where you can find many, many kinds of um, federal court case documents, not just opinions. Um, the unfortunate thing about PACER is that it is not free. It doesn't cost a whole lot, and you may have patrons who are very willing to just go ahead and sign up and get a PACER account. Um, but I just wanted to, to let you know that's not free. Um, another place that people don't realize that they can get some federal court documents and opinions is at the Internet Archive, which um, most of you, I would assume, have probably used. Um, the uh, collection at Internet Archive that has those is called RECAP, R-E-C-A-P, U.S. Federal Court Documents. Um, and um, that's another resource for those. And then um, I'm not sure if some of you may know this or not, that um, Google Scholar is actually um, a great case law um, search tool. And there is actually, if you go to Google Scholar, there is a radio button that says case law, and you can limit um, your searching by jurisdiction. Um, so it's also another resource for case research. Another judicial branch type of law that people, um, or resource that people don't, are not as familiar with, are briefs. Um, if you have a patron who has found a case that they, that they think is really interesting and is on point for them, um, they may want to look at the briefs, because the briefs are the actual written arguments that attorneys submit um, before they go before the court in oral arguments um, on the case. So you'll be able to see what the different parties argued. Um, you'll see what was persuasive to the courts. And you will also be able to find other cases because there will be a table of, of cases, things, uh, cases that they relied on in their arguments. So it gets you into other materials. They're, they're long. Um, they can be long. Um, but they can be very detailed and they can be great resources. Um, those at the state level can be found at the Washington Courts website only back into the 2000s. Um, what you have to do is you need to go, you need to click on the courts link at the state courts website, and then you need to go into the individual division of the Court of Appeals or the state Supreme Court and look for those briefs. Um, 2000, I think 2006 is actually the earliest of those, but it varies depending on the court. 2006, I think 2009 and 2010, maybe. Um, we at our library have all the briefs. So if you need a brief that is older than what you can find online, we can, um, if it's short enough, scan and email you briefs. Um, but we can also interlibrary loan um, the bound copy of briefs. At the federal level, again, um, it's um, a little more difficult to find briefs um, for federal courts. Uh, PACER 
um, would be your not free resource for briefs, um, the Internet Archive Recap U.S. Federal Court Documents Collection also can be a resource for briefs. Um, U.S. Supreme Court briefs are a little bit easier to find. If the U.S. was a party in a case, you can usually find their briefs at the Office of the Solicitor General. The American Bar Association Preview website has some U.S. Supreme Court briefs. And um, Find Law, um, which is a, a legal research um, website, has um, some U.S. Supreme Court briefs from the 90s and the 2000s. Um, and then finally, for the judicial branch, um, court rules is another type of judicial branch law that I had when I first came to the law library um, and did not have a lot of legal background. I had no idea that these court rules existed, um, but they are um, adopted by the courts and they govern procedure um, for both the courts and the parties coming before the courts. Um, so they are a must see, a must look at for your patrons who are doing um, their own legal research. If they are representing themselves in court, you're going to want to point them to the court rules. They cover things, criminal procedure, civil procedure, evidence, how you format documents and the general rules. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the, for, in the criminal rules that speedy trial um, requirements are covered in court rules. Um, so you definitely need to point your patrons there um, if they're doing their own legal work. Um, state court rules can be found at the Washington Courts website. You'll note that there are both state and local court rules. State court rules apply to all the courts in the state and then local jurisdictions will um, make their own rules that supplement those state court rules. So um, when your patron knows what court they are, um, are going to have their case in, then you wanna make sure that they're looking at the court rules for that local jurisdiction. Um, federal court rules, um, you can go to uscourts.gov, which I mentioned before, and look at the individual court um, to find, typically find the court rules for that court. Um, before I move on to secondary materials, I just wanted to um, quickly um, let you know about some resources for local legal research, because um, I would imagine you have patrons coming in um, who are doing research. We, you know, I gave an example earlier of ordinance research. If somebody is um, looking at things that are governed much more at a local level. Um, the Municipal Research and Services Center website is our go-to resource for local legal research. Um, that is at mrsc.org. Um, they have links to all the city and county codes that are available. Um, they have links to city and county websites. Um, but another wealth of um, information at the MRSC website is um, they have topical pages on all sorts of local government issues, whether it's not all legal, um, it, there are just are some governance and policy pages there too. Um, but if you have um, especially local advocates and within local government, they may be interested in go open government issues. They have a topical page on that. Nuisances, animal control, homelessness, um, just a great many um, local issues. It's, it's really our go-to site. Um, city and county websites are a place to look when you have some questions that are local related. And then finally, I just wanted to note um, in talking earlier about court cases, and I was talking about the cases at the appellate court level, if you have patrons coming in who have cases in the lower trial courts like the district court and the superior court, there is a case records search feature at the Washington Courts website. It does not provide hugely detailed information, but if people are looking for court dates or they're just interested, if there was a case that was in, say, a superior court, um, that is a place to do um, some local courts research. Okay, secondary materials. So again, 
talking about primary materials, those are the law themselves. Secondary materials are um, materials that explain the law. When would you use a secondary material? I would say when just reading a statute, regulation, case, or court rule is not enough. You may have, have read up a little bit um, in the statutes on what you, your patron, you or your patron is researching, but it's just not giving you the full picture. I would recommend a secondary material then. When you have a patron who's just wanting to research an area of the law in general, just to get an idea. Um, in fact, at, at the court here, oftentimes, um, we have uh, law clerks coming in and they just want to get a handle on an area of the law before they even know where to start their research. Um, and then if you have no idea where to find the primary authority, where to find the law at all, um, a statute of case, um, you might want to use a secondary material then to get into those primary materials. And here's an example of that. Um, this is a book that gets used um, by all, many, many, many of our um, patrons, whether they're in the court, attorneys, public. Um, it's called Washington Practice. Um, this section is from the Tort Law and Practice volume. Um, say if you had a patron coming in and they were researching liability for motor vehicle accidents, and even more specifically, liability for driving while intoxicated, there is a section in this book um, that addresses that. Um, it sort of gives a summary of, of the law in Washington on that. And then you have um, footnotes that then get you into the primary authority. So it will tell us where to look in the RCW or what cases are related to that topic. Um, you'll see at the bottom there, there are a couple of RCWs, RCW 9.91020, and another RCW um, that are mentioned in that section up above. And then there are two cases, so um, your patron could then go look at those cases to see um, more about that area of the law. And then there's also a footnote there that sends you to another area of the book um, to research negligence. So. Um, so that's how some of these secondary materials can help you find the primary authority. Um, a, another secondary material that's very useful are law reviews. Um, these are becoming more accessible, I think, every day um, to people for free. Um, we send people to law reviews when they have, you know, maybe they've done some general research. Um, or they are maybe writing a paper or something like that that is um, actually more narrow in scope. So they've got the broader idea and now they want to narrow down their research. Um, law reviews um, are, are cover all sorts of narrow topics. Um, they oftentimes you'll find law review articles that, that um, address certain areas of the law um, and how they are treated in um, multiple states. Um, so uh, we send people to law reviews oftentimes when they are, are doing that type of research. Um, and then historical research, for example, if somebody was um, researching the history of the Growth Management Act or the Clean Air Act, um, instead of actually going and it, it's, it's sort of like not having to um, recreate the wheel, um, somebody may have already done that research um, for you and, and law reviews are often a place where that has been done. Um, accessing law reviews, um, Google Scholar is an excellent place to access law reviews. Um, if you've used Google Scholar, you'll notice when you're doing article research that there are oftentimes links to the right of the actual PDF for free, yay! Um, but also um, you may notice, especially if you're doing legal research, that there may be um, uh, something to the right that says Hein Online. And in that case, um, our library has Hein Online. So um, you can shoot us off an email, say, I noticed um, on Google Scholar that this article is available through Hein Online. We can download it and email it to you, um, simple as that. Um, Digital Commons is um, another place. I haven't used Digital Commons as much, but um, they do have law review articles on there um, as well. Um, legal encyclopedias are a great place um, to send 
um, students, I would say, in particular. But again, just if, if somebody is re doing some research generally on an area of the law, um, the two main legal encyclopedias that cover all state and federal jurisdictions are American Jurisprudence Second, or Amjur Second, and Corpus Juris Secundum, CJS. Um, there is a Washington legal um, encyclopedia, and I actually just a couple slides back showed you a volume from Washington Practice. It's a 36 volume set that covers topics um, that run the gamut from civil procedure, criminal procedure, real property, creditor debtor, creditor debtor issues. Um, so um, it's a great resource. And I have an example um, from CJS. Corpus Juris Secundum. Um, if you had a patron who was interested in that, you know, they thought that they should have been admitted to a, a public entertainment venue, or they were, you know, wanting to know what the law is surrounding that, um, this volume 30A of CJS has the topic entertainment and amusement sports. And this section addresses admission and accommodation to public entertainment venues. Um, I have at the top here, the top arrow um, points to sort of the summary section of this um, section of the uh, encyclopedia um, in bold, and it sort of says this is the general statement about the, this area of the law. It reads, proprietors of theaters and other places of public amusement may, in the absence of statute, admit or exclude persons at their pleasure and may make such rules and regulations as they see fit to govern the admission of persons to their premises. And then the rest of the um, encyclopedia section is really goes into more detail about what that, that area in bold says. And then you'll see below there are all sorts of footnotes uh, to cases um, and other library materials on the topic. I thought the um, footnote at the bottom was sort of funny. It was about mobster lookalikes and whether they can be, should be admitted to public entertainment venues. Um, it says, as long as the proprietor of a horse racetrack is not excluding a mobster lookalike because of his national origin or because of race, color, creed, or sex, then common law and state law allows him to exclude the mobster lookalike. So if you ever had any questions on mobster lookalikes in public entertainment venues, you now know. Um, but it's just sort of a, a good example of how it, it can help somebody generally, but then it actually gives some specific cases and information on that area of the law. Um, some other uh, treatises um, that you can find um, in our library. Now, the secondary materials are much more harder to find online than primary materials, um, but we have all these materials in our library and can help you with them either through ILL or uh, scanning and emailing portions of, of these materials. Um, Washington Lawyer's Practice Manual is actually sort of similar to Washington Practice. It covers um, some similar areas of the law, but also different areas, um, real property, family law, um, but you can actually see the table of contents for this um, publication at the King County Bar Association website, and I have that, um, that URL right here. Um, the Washington State Bar Association publishes desk books that are, um, actually um, in-depth treatments of all sorts of topics and that are specific to Washington State. Um, they cover real property, environmental law, family law, legal ethics, the Public Records Act, um, great resource, and then um, judicial bench books and bench guides, which are actually, um, some of those are available for free at the Washington Courts Resources website. Um, bench books or bench guides are um, materials that are put together for uh, judges use in, in their jobs presiding over cases. They need to know specific statutes and cases on topics and um, if judges need to know them, we figure the public needs to know them too. Um, so some of the topics that are covered in bench books that are freely available at the Washington Courts website are immigration, LGBTQ issues, as well as truancy. Um, quickly, um, some other general treatises are nutshells and hornbooks. Um, very um, basic introduction to all sorts of different areas of the law. 
um, West Academic, the West Academic website actually has um, lists of all of the nutshells and horn books in those series. Um, so if you need to know if there's a nutshell or a horn book, you can look at that website and then you can contact us or look at our catalog online and see um, if we have the, the nutshell or horn book you're looking for. And then the final um, secondary resource that I just want to quickly mention is something called American Law Reports. Um, we end up sending articles or what annotations are called annotations from American Law R Reports to patrons all the time. We have them in our database um, databases and they're great because they are um, on point for some reason um, the whole thing here didn't show up it didn't the first page of the annotation didn't show up on the slide sort of strange um, but it um, they just cover all sorts of topics and so you can find something oftentimes that's on point that will help you with your research. This ALR article is happens to be on employment and medical marijuana and whether employers can fire a, a person for using medical, medical marijuana or, um, or refuse to hire somebody. Um, so if you had a patron who was ha happening to research that topic, they, um, this um, is, it covers cases only, but it covers all jurisdictions, uh, state and federal. And then it also, you'll see um, at, on this image, um, it gives some other materials that are related. Um, it actually, this one get, takes you to the Drug Enforcement Agency website. Um, so it has some other uh, pointers to other places that you can do some research. Um, so I'm almost done. I just want to quickly talk about our um, law library the state law library services so that you all know what's available to our patrons and as well to you and your patrons. Um, we do reference by phone, email, and uh, an Ask a Librarian service. Our Ask a Librarian service consists of both a chat service and then just a form that you can fill out that we treat much more like email. Um, our chat hours are Monday through Friday. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, I went, wanted to mention that our Ask a Librarian service is not, um, it's not a consortium service. It's our own independent service. So if you ever tap into um, Ask a Librarian, um, you'll get, you're going to be getting, uh, getting us directly. Um, we circulate materials to state employees as well as Washington residents with a valid ID. Um, we have a document delivery service um, from our print materials. Um, patrons can um, receive 100 copied or scanned pages per day free of charge. Um, we will download documents from our databases and um, send them out to our patrons, up to 10 documents um, per day free of charge. Um, the technology um, databases that we have at our library on site our Westlaw, which is legal um, database, Hein Online, when I, which I mentioned before for law reviews, but it also has a huge number of other things, federal, statutory, history, Indian law, um, or Native American law, but it's, uh, they call it an in Indian law in their database, um, some government documents, um, old state statutes, all sorts of stuff at Hein Online, um, CCH labor and employment, pretty self-explanatory. Um, Casemaker Libra has access to the um, State Bar Association desk books I mentioned before, um, as well as some seminar materials. And then we have Gale Legal Forms database um, that patrons can use if they need to fill out legal forms. We can't help people fill out legal forms, but we have that database here for our patrons. We have um, Wi-Fi, we have self-serve printing and photocopying up to 200 pages free per day. Um, and our patrons can download and scan, uh, scan to USB when they are here. How we can help you at your libraries, um, free interlibrary loan, anything that I talked about today that we have in our library, we can interlibrary loan. Um, you can contact us through regular reference channels um, or you can request through OCLC WorldShare ILL. Our institution symbol is ZF5. We are a free lender. We're always looking for um, recipro reciprocal lenders. 
Um, and you can definitely call us whether you have questions, whether you have a patron sitting next to you and you have no, I, you know, no idea where to start. You can give us a call. We'll help you walk your patron through, um, through their research. Um, I want to say thank you. Um, I know no, no, um, mentioned my handouts, um, that have URLs, um, for the websites that I mentioned today. I also, um, have a where to start handout um, that has all sorts of great basic legal research websites that I would have loved to have talked to you about today, um, but obviously not enough time. Um, if you have any feedback, if you have any questions, if you need help with anything, need to follow up, um, my email is shaney.kate at courts.wa.gov. And, um, and I have all of our, um, our website and contact information here. And now I have time for questions, I think. And I was going to suggest if you have a question to put it into the chat box and we'll read them aloud for Shani. I have not seen questions coming in during the webinar, but let's give it give it a little bit of time because I'm sure people were listening hard. I know I was. Oh, here, uh, Shania, is a question is, is there such a thing as a federated search? So I assume you mean uh, by federated search, um, sort of a one, uh, one place type search? Yes. Yes. Um, there, it, it depends on what you're researching. Um, the state legislature's website, I mean, I think both the state legislature's website and FedSys, um, I, I oftentimes, um, this is a hard question for me, I have to admit, because um, the type of searching I'm usually doing, I sort of know where I want to search, so I'm not as familiar with just the general federated searching, um, but I believe both FedSys and the state legislature's website um, have some fairly general searching if you don't know exactly um, what you're looking for, um, but I um, actually would um, would say, and I actually had um, not mentioned it in, um, in my um, presentation, that I actually just do a lot more searching on Google than, than any of those specific sites anymore because I just find um, that Google, even in just like the last year, if, if I'm looking for statutes on Google, um, I just find that the search results are oftentimes very accurate, especially if I know there's an RCW on something, um, but I just don't know where in the RCW, I'll put RCW public records or public disclosure or something, and the search results are oftentimes super on point. Um, but I don't find in particular the state legislature's website to be um, super helpful with searching. I don't know if I totally answered your question, um, if you were looking for even more of a, a, a sort of an outside federated search site. Um, and Shani, we have another question here that says, how does your library connect with or support the local county law libraries? Would it be better for a patron to start there rather than going to you for help? Um, it depends on the county. Um, I was actually just discussing county law libraries with my um, coworker yesterday um, because some county law libraries are actually just a few books in a courtroom or um, they may have a room with some books um, that that nobody is really doing a lot with um, so um, there is um, the uh, Wackle W-A-C-L-L -L website that has some um, uh, 
um, links to uh, county law libraries, but um, some of them are actually functioning libraries and some of them are not. Um, I can say that when people contact us, um, unless it's something that's super, super local and we know that there is an, an actual librarian at the county law library that's gonna be able to help somebody, we would almost never turn you in, away and say, we want you to contact your county law library before you contact us. Um, but we definitely will be um, referring people to county law libraries if we think that that library is gonna have more local materials to help them. And then, and of course, if we're talking about bigger libraries like King County, that we're definitely more often going to be referring people to their local county law libraries. Great. Um, I have not seen any more questions coming in. I probably confused so everybody so much they just don't even know what to ask. I hope not. <laughs> No, it was great, um, and I'm really looking forward to that handout so I can like pursue some of the, the links that you've provided and, and get a better understanding. Um, yeah, yeah, it was tough. Um, I, I would love to have um, shoved all sorts of stuff in this, um, in this presentation because I, I definitely think some hands, more hands-on direct um, review of the materials is um, definitely how you cement this uh, this knowledge, but um, I wanted to make sure that people, um, you know, got a good overview. Sure, it's hard in one hour. As one comment just came in, said it's a lot to take in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll all be clicking on a lot of links once we get that yeah. handout. And so, yeah, and I think people just don't. Um, I I I want people to feel comfortable calling us because. Um, I, you know, I don't know if people, you know, think about, oh, they're, you know, in the Supreme Court building, they're busy, they're dealing, you know, they're helping the justices and all mm -hmm. this stuff. And we are, but we, um, but we are, are actively helping the public, whether they're walking in or calling us. And there's no reason for libraries not to just call us and use us as a resource as well. Well, hopefully all of us are, you know, all, anyone who works in the library knows that we kind of questions are our stock and trade so that they won't feel uncomfortable calling you with a question also. I, I mean, to me, that that's my biggest takeaway from this webinar is that you guys are there to help us. And so that, that if we get a legal question that's just over our head, we can, we can get in touch with you. And that's, that's, that's very Definitely. reassuring for me. Yeah. So, so um, I'm not seeing any more questions, but I did want to let people know that we have a follow-up survey that we need to gather statistics for our own funders for the um, IMLS. And we'd really appreciate it if you um, fill out the survey once the webinar is over. And we will be, you should hopefully later today, we will get the recording uploaded to YouTube and Jeremy will be sending you that link and also a um, the handout that Shani has provided. So thank you very much everybody for coming. Um, and maybe we'll see you next month on the first Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Shani, thank you, Shani. Yeah. That was doubly for you. Thank